In this class we want to talk about management accounting and as you can see from the slide in front of you we're going to start with the characteristics of management accounting. Now management accounting deals with data internal to the business that facilitates good management. So we contrast immediately management accounting with financial accounting. Financial accounting is looking outwards towards the external stakeholders of the business, the government, the shareholders and people who are interested in the financial performance of the business. Management accounting by contrast is looking inwards. It's dealing with the processes and the financial relationships within the business to try to help management make more informed and better decisions. It, so it helps with effective decision making and that's an important requirement of management accounting. It's to provide information, uh, it's to, to take data from the, the company, refine it, process the data and present it to management so it enables them to make effective decisions. So it promotes efficiency. That's the the whole idea of management accounting. It's to uh, enable management to make better decisions and to better run the business. So it promotes efficiency and it enables the business to achieve its goals. If it promotes efficiency and makes uh, and enables better decision making, the chances are it's going to achieve its goals, whatever the goals it sets itself, providing of course the goals were realistic. Now it provides accounting information. Well, it helps in good decision making. It identifies risk and uncertainty. It, it informs the the managers of uh, problems with, let's say, the investment in new capital equipment. What are the risks of investing in particular types of equipment? And talks about the uncertainty of the market. And so it's able to take facts and figures wherever possible from the uh, from the business and then process those facts and figures to enable it to present a case to management which will help management make a good decision and which will help management overcome the problem of risk perhaps or understand the problem of risk more completely. Risk you'll remember is associated with uh, calculations, we can calculate risks. Uh, we have some idea of risk. It, it may be objective probability tells us that whenever something happens, something else happens. Or it could be subjective probability that we think that in this case certain outcomes will happen. We, we estimate that they will happen. So we have two types of probability, objective and subjective. Objective is where we uh, we can calculate precisely what the probabilities are. Subjective is when we estimate the probabilities and in this way we can uh, assess the risks in terms of the probable outcomes. But with uncertainty we have no idea. <coughs> we have no idea of the probabilities. Uh, we are faced with a situation that we simply don't know. But having said all of that the management accountant will pick up data from within the business, process the data and try to analyze it and try to make uh, as an informed position as possible available to the management who can then make the decision to go ahead with a project or to cancel a project or whatever they decide. So it helps in identifying risks and uncertainty and it helps in price setting. Uh, management need to know how much to charge for a particular product. Well to do that they need to know what the costs of the product uh, are. Well, how much does it take to make this product? Uh, what's the, the marginal cost of producing it for example? What, what does it cost precisely to make that product in terms of raw materials? Or perhaps in some cases in terms of labour and raw materials? And this would be the most basic cost, the, the prime cost of a certain product. Of course the management would then want to add a markup as a contribution towards the overheads of the business and towards profitability. But 
it certainly helps management to know how much it takes or how much it costs to to make something to make a product within the business because once they know how much it costs they can then go about setting the price if they don't know how much it costs price setting becomes very arbitrary and almost very dangerous they could set the wrong price which could be detrimental to the profitability and the continuance of the business uh, it also helps the business through the use of budgets management accountants can set up budgets for various departments budgets for certain activities and they can then monitor the budget to see if the managers who are dealing with the budget the budget holders are operating within the requirements of the budget or perhaps they're they're above it so the the accountants are able to look at variances on the budget to see if the uh, budget holder is overspent or underspent and it's a good way of controlling the business it also identifies cause and effect relationships uh, financial accounting reports the financial performance of the business management accounting deals with the underlying causes for profits within the business so management accountant accountants deal with how the profits are generated the financial accountants take those profitability figures and prepare the final sets of accounts for the business and deal with the financial issues uh, of the business uh, to the outside stakeholders but the management accountants are the ones who calculate how the profits can be made and improved looks at the running of the business looks at the costs involved in running the business and makes uh, reports available to manage about management about uh, how the processes can be changed and be made more efficient and and so on so the management accountants are dealing with the underlying causes for profit within the business the financial accountants are taking those profitability reports uh, or, or those profitability figures I should say and preparing the final accounts there are also special techniques and concepts management uh, uh, accounting uses special techniques for example budgetary control that's uh, within the remit of the management accountants they, they set up budgets for various activities within the business and then control the budgets and in that way help the management control the business if they're controlling the budget they're controlling the business but they also look at marginal costing they look at the the price that it takes as I said earlier to produce a product the cost I should say to, to produce a product which will then be reflected in the price so it, it looks at the cost of the raw materials perhaps the cost of labor the essential cost to make that product which can then go on to management to help them in setting the price as I said earlier could use standard costing costing it could just simply try to work out what the costs across the the business are uh, divide out for example uh, a particular production run they know cost a certain amount how many items were pro produced in that production run divide the costs by the number produced and it'll get a standard costing and then they can then monitor variances on the standard costs so they're not looking at the cost of a particular product they're looking at perhaps the costs of running a particular machine or running a particular activity it could be activity based costing ABC and that's the subject matter of a separate video these help with financial planning so the management accountant is very important as a facilitator of good management and good financial uh, planning now decision making well studying various alternative uh, planning scenarios uh, management are constantly in the process of trying to work out what is the best way of of operating what's the best way of managing and running the business good management looks critically at its own processes and tries to improve upon these so management is constantly trying to plan out 
how to run the business and looking at different scenarios, different possibilities. And management accountants are very important in this process because they can bring facts and figures and uh, bring points to bear on the whole planning process which will help management in that decision making. Modelling data and business proposals to estimate possible outcomes. Well, the management accountants can take the existing if you like profile of costs across the business looking at what it costs in production, in distribution, in stores management and so on. It, it can look at the business and look at the, all the different cost centres of the business and can then start to model the business and run what-if exercises. They might do this on a computer. There might be uh, different computer packages which enable them to monitor the business in this way. What would happen if the stores was reduced? Or what would happen if the moved from having a stores to a, a just-in-time policy? Um, what would happen if? So that they're able to model the data and go back with various proposals to management for them to consider. Making use, uh, useful data available for effective management is very important. Uh, management needs a flow of good information. The need to know what exactly is happening in the business, how different parts of the business are connected, uh, what are the issues or the hold-ups or the, uh, the misalignments within the business that are causing uh, extra costs. So they need the cost and management accountants to be involved to work out exactly what it is that's happening, what are the costs, and to come back with that data and refine the data into information, turn the data into information by processing it and making it more intelligible, more understandable. And that will help management to become more effective. They also uh, are involved in achieving tasks. Management accounting helps management to set realistic targets. Uh, it's, it's not a good practice for management to simply sit down and set targets, simply dream up some targets. It's important that the targets are based on what the business is capable of. So management accountants know the costs of the business, they know the costs of the various departments, they know the costs of different processes and so they're able to make information available which enables management to come up with realistic targets not just aspirations or, or fanciful ideas about what they could do or what they can't do these are actually based on fact, and but they're based on fact and based on the experience of the management accountant who brings the information to bear so that management come up with realistic targets. It may be used uh, to analyse data and manage performance indicators. Sometimes management may set performance indicators that are too onerous. They simply can't be achieved realistically. Uh, the indicators uh, suggest that the performance levels of the machines and the operators would, would have to be excessive. The management accountants can bring realism into performance management and looking at the various indicators that could be used but looking at the performance targets themselves and making sure that the performance targets are realistic. So they can identify appropriate indicators of performance but they can also look at uh, how the performance, the performance is judged, whether it's realistic or not realistic, because it's, it's based on the facts that the management accountant have acquired and have analysed. If required by management, it may indicate appropriate remedial measures for problems. So sometimes management may have a problem which may be related to any aspect of the business 
and the need some suggestions for remedial measures to, to solve the problems. Uh, instead of just jumping at solutions, the management may ask the management accountants, accountants uh, to investigate what the most appropriate remedial measure, the, remedi the best fix for a problem, if a problem arises. Not just any solution, but perhaps looking for the, the best solution. And the management accountants are best placed because they understand the business, they understand the cost, they understand the relationships within the business. They're in the best position to come up with the best solution. It may be used to measure variances from set budget targets and recommend corrective measures. Well, we said earlier that management accountants may recommend the use of budgetary control throughout the business, which would give budget holders, perhaps uh, departmental managers, uh, the right to uh, spend from within the budget. But sometimes the budgets may be set at the wrong level, or the managers may have uh, may may not exhibit, I should say, perhaps the ability to handle the budget. They, they may uh, be reticent in uh, taking responsibility for the budget or may mismanage the budget. So it's important that the management accountant monitor the budgets and look for variances, look for differences between what was expected and what actually happened and take corrective measures wherever need be. So they, they, they should ensure that uh, budgets should not be depleted too quickly or they should be managed in a particular way. And part of that may be talking to the budget holders and educating the budget holders how to manage the budgets uh, or working with the budget holder to ensure that the budget, budget holder has the confidence to use the budget but use it appropriately. So the management accountant has a big task in making sure that the budgets within the business are used effectively and correctly. We say that there are no fixed norms within management accounting. Well, management accounting needs to be flexible to cope with the requirements of various needs, sizes and structures of the organisation. Companies come in different sizes, they have different needs, they make different products, they have different processes. Management accountant, the management accountant needs to be very flexible to cope with all of this. They need to be able to work out uh, different costs and, and different relationships and be able to set budgets for, for highly diverse organisations. Some management accountants may work in the building trade, some may work in engineering, some may work in chemical plants, uh, some may work in hospitals. So they need to be able to uh, adjust to the environment within which they find themselves and be able to make a contribution within that organisation. So management accountants need to be extremely flexible. Management accounting has no fixed norms, whereas financial accounting totally depends on certain rules and principles. Financial accounting has to prepare the balance sheet, the trading and the profit and loss accounts and uh, and these are prepared to certain standards and have to be signed off and there are various processes that are required. So there is something quite fixed and, and regulated about financial accounting. But management accounting, as I said, they may find themselves in different organisations, different sizes. Some companies are big, some companies are small. There may be various needs, different structures within the organisation. So the management accountant has to be very flexible. Therefore, presentation and analysis of accounting data may vary from one organisation to another as far as the management accountant is concerned. Uh, the management accountant will have to deal with whatever the organisation he or she finds him or, or, or herself 
in. They'll have to deal with that organisation, they'll have to deal with the owners of the organisation, the managers within the organisation, they'll have to cope with different sizes of the organisation, different processes, uh, different cultures within the organisation as well. Because the management may want things done in a certain way, which may not be the most efficient way. So the, the management accountant will have to cope with all of these diverse ways in which business is conducted. Increasing efficiency. Well, management accountants are more aware of the efficient and inefficient sections of an organisation and therefore able to promote efficient practices. Management accountants should be able to work out which sections are efficient and which sections are not. They should highlight this to management who can then take some remedial steps to bring about greater efficiency. Um, but the need to base their recommendations on evidence as far as possible, on facts and figures. And that's what management accountants are good at. They're, they're able to analyse the situation, uh, able to do costings and produce reports which are based on fact. Present this to management who can then take steps to bring inefficient sections of the business up to appropriate levels of efficiency. Management accounting, accountancy is informative, giving a, a clear picture of costs within the organisation. This information may help management in decision making, forecasting and business control. So management accounting is informative. It, it's, it's an informative process. They're, they're looking at facts and figures and processes and doing analysis. So it's informative. It's not guesswork. And if there are some estimations, the management accountant makes clear where there are estimations or where some recommendations may not be entirely based on calculations. They must be open about their, their work. They must be clear so that the management understands exactly the reliability they can place on the recommendations of the management accountant's reports. But it will certainly help management in decision making and in forecasting, perhaps forecasting costs or forecasting uh, the requirements of the stores or requirements for raw materials or whatever it is. And there's greater business control as a consequence. Big decisions are taken by top management using information provided by management accountants say big decisions, um, decisions relating to the overall control of the business, the location of the business, the size of the business, the type of products the business produces, uh, their position in the market, um, their emphasis on research and development, and on growth. So the big decisions tend to be influenced by management accountants. The top management rely on this information. It's very important to them to have <clears throat> a summary picture of what's happening in the business so that they can then go about setting the an appropriate corporate strategy, one which will move the business forward. But it's, it's not just aspirational. It's based on facts and figures. It's based on the recommendation of the management accountants. They are the ones who feed this information to the top management who can then go about making appropriate decisions. The decision making of an organisation depends on skills and efficiencies of the management. But part of the skills and efficiency of the management is in turn based on the skills and efficiency of the management accountants. So it's very important that the, the decision makers, the management, have appropriate skills and efficiency and recognize the importance of the management accounting uh, function and are able to uh, integrate the recommendations from management accounting into their decision making. Uh, it would be futile if the management were to make decisions and those decisions completely ignore the recommendations of the management accountants because it would be futile in the sense that it's dangerous. 
uh, it's dangerous for the business it's dangerous for the survival of the business um, so the the management make decisions uh, that are based on facts and figures and analysis performed by the management accountants and the management themselves have the skills and the recognition that this information from the management accountants is important. Now planning and formulating policies. Well the management accountants provide relevant information. It's almost needless to say it's pointless to provide irrelevant information but they provide relevant information. In other words what we mean by relevant here is that the information tends to be quite focused. There is a problem, there is an issue, the management accountants are able to focus in on that issue and provide information about it. They're able to collect the data associated with the problem or the issue, then analyze the data and provide information as a consequence of that analysis. It uses a, a range of um, data analysis techniques. Could be regression analysis in statistics, or it could be trend analysis, looking at the trends in costs. Uh, so they may be able to model these on computers using various computer packages. And some of these techniques may be very technical. They may require a great deal of understanding of statistical theory. But the management accountants don't just simply make recommendations as to what is likely to happen. They try as far as possible to base it on analysis. Of course we can criticize the, the use of these techniques as having their own limitations. Um, the regression analysis for example may assume that the relationships that have been studied are straight lines. It may do. Uh, whereas in fact we very seldom encounter straight lines in terms of um, trends or patterns in the real world. So we could criticize the techniques but we can't criticize the desire of the cost and management accountant to try to use some techniques to get an even greater insight into what's happening. That's a laudable exercise. Controlling performance. Well, management accountancy uses a range of techniques to monitor and assess variance from any planned course of action. So they're, they're constantly looking at not just the budgets, looking for variance in, in the use of budgets, but they're looking at variances from what was planned. If the business sets itself an objective of achieving something by a certain date and it's, it's off course, the chances are the management accountants will spot this before others and may, may enable management to take corrective action to bring the business back on course. There may be something happening that was not, not expected within the business. It could be suppliers are unable to deliver raw materials on time or it could be that um, key personnel within the organization are away from work due to illness or due to some uh, some factor that takes them away. So whatever the reason, management accountants will be able to monitor the planned course of action for the business against the actual course of action and to highlight the variance and try to get some corrective measures put in place. So they may use budgetary control or they may just monitor the overall uh, trend of the business to try and ensure that the, the business is moving where management wanted, to, wanted the business to go in the time period they set. But they, may, they may use budgetary control to try and uh, bring this about. They may set up budgets in various departments and, or for various processes or activities and then monitor the budgets. They could use standard costing. Um, they could try to work out the costs, the if you like, the the normal costs of producing a particular product, and then monitor the cost to see if uh, if the costs are increasing and to what 
degree are they, are they increasing, what percentage increase is it, and what are the likely uh, impact uh, impacts that this will have throughout the organisation, and perhaps impact on the final price or on contracts that the, the business may have agreed with buyers. So accurate and timely reports are prepared for management and that is a key function of management accounting to, to keep management uh, aware of what's happening through the use of regular reports and regular updates. Interpreting financial statements, well management accountants provide relevant information in a systematic way that can be used by the management in planning and decision making. So the management accountant takes relevant information as I said earlier and it produces this relevant information in a systematic way, one that's clearly understood by management and management can use for planning and decision making. It may use for example cash flow and that's important to, to make sure that the the bills, the pressing bills, the bills that are coming up in the next week or the next few days, that these bills can be paid. The reputation of the business is at stake if nothing else. But it's important that the bills are paid on time and the business honours its commitments. So the business must have sufficient funds to pay uh, its short-term obligations, which could be wages, salaries, payments to uh, suppliers of raw materials, payers to uh, contractors who have performed various tasks for the business, whatever the obligations are. And these will be written into the cash flow statement presented to management so they know exactly how much they need in the next say month and are able to to try and generate the revenue to pay those particular obligations. It could do ratio analysis, it could perform uh, some calculations and work out the ratios of inputs to outputs or the productivity of certain parts of the, the business, it tries to estimate that. Estimating productivity is very complicated because uh, it's it's difficult to work out the productivity of a machine. Machines are normally operated by people so is the output associated with the person or with the machine? Having said that, ratio analysis is important and it could be that the performance of the business in total could be compared to similar businesses if the information was available even though the other businesses may be of a different size through the use of ratio analysis uh, the business is able to assess its performance against similar businesses. So ratio analysis has got some role to play in terms of uh, analysing the performance of the business and it falls really to the management accountants to try and work out ratios and see how efficiency has changed within the business also using ratios. Uh, how long did it take to perform a particular task last year? How long does it take to perform the similar task this year? Work it out as a percentage and present it and say well last year it it took an hour this year is taking 40 minutes as a proportion it's this percentage. They could use trend analysis, they could look at figures and look at the trends, uh, which way is the trend, is it increasing or decreasing or is it flat lining, is it, is it just horizontal, What's, what is the trend, what's the trend in costs, are the costs increasing, what's the trend in sales, is the sale, are the sales increasing or falling or, so a management accountant uh, or accountancy I should say overlaps to some extent with marketing, with production, uh, they seem to be involved in many parts of the business, they could have crossed many parts of the business and bring their expertise to bear on many parts of the business and, and help various departmental heads, functional heads throughout the business to do analysis of their own performance. 
And comparative financial statements are provided to management to aid business management. So the management accountant are able to prevent, sorry, are able to present um, different financial statements, uh, different uh, calculations, different insights into the business and able to explain these insights together with their criticisms because sometimes the calculations may be uh, may have some issues associated that need to be discussed perhaps they're not entirely reliable but they're a good insight and this will help the management of the business and help them to make good decisions Motivating employees. Well, management accounting can provide costings for motivational schemes and also assess the likely return to the business of such schemes. Um, it's important that the employees are properly motivated. Uh, the employees should be engaged. Uh, the productivity of the business, uh, to a large extent, depends on the motivation of the employees. So what motivational schemes can be put into place, uh, perhaps bonus schemes or uh, perhaps some additional perks or better working conditions or whatever it is. So some motivational schemes may be put in place and uh, when, when they're in place then productivity should increase, there should be more um, engagement with work, more motivation from the employees and the, the benefits from the motivational factors that were put in place can then be weighed up against the cost of the motivational factors. So the business spends so much on trying to motivate the employees and the employees respond by increasing output by a certain amount. Is it worthwhile? Is it a worthwhile exercise? And it's only really the management accountants who are in the position to calculate this and to make recommendations. Making decisions. Well, accurate and effective decision making requires accurate and timely information. Uh, if that's not the case, then the decision making may be flawed. Or it could even be dangerous. It could be dangerous for the continuance of the business. The business may, may fail as a consequence of bad decision making. So accurate and timely information is important. Management accounting uses techniques such as absorption costing. Now, this is when you look at the overheads of the business. Um, for example, let's say the overhead of uh, research and development. Now in a sense research and development doesn't produce anything. Uh, it's it's almost an entirely a cost until it comes up with some new innovative product that's going to launch the business off in a, perhaps a new direction, a new profitable direction. But there are long periods in which research and development is just moving along and it doesn't appear to be producing anything. But it must be paid for. So it's an overhead. Now that may be allocated to areas that are producing products that are selling in the marketplace. Production, distribution and so on. So some way of working out how to pay for research and development by apportioning their costs to the other departments. Getting the other departments to pay for research and development in other words. And this could be done on various ways, and there are several videos on this topic, but uh, it could be done on the basis of the floor space occupied by the research and development department. So what's the total floor space of the business? How much floor space does each department take up? And apportion it accordingly. Or it could be done on the basis of the number of workers in each department. It could be done on different on a different basis and really that's the subject matter of separate videos but management accounting uses techniques such as absorption costing and they use this to help again in making good decisions. They could use marginal costing 
which is a, a very valuable tool in price setting because the managers who set the prices need to know how much does it cost to make a particular product. If they don't know how much it costs to make the product then they're guessing and that's dangerous. But if they can work out how much it costs to make a particular product then they add on a percentage which is the contribution towards the overheads and the profitability of the business then the price can start to emerge and they know what they, they need to charge in the marketplace. Reporting to management. Well, management accountants inform and advise the management about the latest position of the company. So the management are in constant touch with what's happening in the business through the activities of management accounting. The management are aware of costs, of routines, of they're, they're aware of the, the costs of processes, of raw materials, of sales, they know what the trends are. They are being, in a sense, enlightened by the management accountants on a continual basis. So the management are very much in control. But they're in control because they are being fed good information by management accountants. Coordinating amongst uh, departments. Well, management accountants help in coordinating departments of an organisation. Because the management accountants don't fit into perhaps any one of the uh, departments that they are reporting on, they, they may belong to the accountancy department, but their activities cut across all the other departments because that's where their work is in, in doing costings, in uh, looking at the processes, managing budgets and so on. So they are in a sense working in various departments. They're able to coordinate the work of the various departments. They're able to bring uh, news of what is going right or going wrong in one department to other departments. They're able to inform the management but they're also able to inform different departmental heads of issues and get them sorted out locally. Get these issues sorted out before they become major issues. So they're able to coordinate various departments simply because they're involved within those departments on a day-to-day -day basis. That's where they are collecting the data and doing analysis and discussing issues with departmental managers and uh, doing reports on different departments and all the departments are therefore in a sense in contact with each other through the activities of the management accountants. It monitors departments by scrutinizing the functional budgets and preparing reports for management on a regular basis. So the management is also aware of what's happening within the various functional departments because the management accountants are constantly scrutinizing the various budgets that are held within the functional departments. So the production finishing department, the one that finishes off the product before it goes to the customer, polishes it up and makes it look good, that department will have a budget and the management accountants will monitor the budget to make sure that the departmental head, the budget holder, is working within the budget. But they're also able to prepare re reports to management about how well that department is working and what issues it's confronting and and what adjustments to the budget are required. So it leads to better management. And of course administering tax, our last topic. It's essential that the organization meets its statutory tax requirements and this is the task of the accountancy section. Mostly financial uh, accountants will ensure that the tax authorities are dealt with appropriately. But um, as I said earlier, the level of profitability of the business is really uh, the function of the management accountant. The management accountant is the one who knows the business, knows what the business is attempting to achieve, knows the costs, knows the, the trends, knows the, the various relationships between the different departments. So it's the management accountant who will, in a sense, ultimately work out what the profitability of the business is. And of course, 
the government will be interested in receiving tax on the profitability of the business. So it may be that the management accountant, uh, having reported and having helped to generate the profit, then enable the financial accountants, their colleagues, um, who have a different professional uh, obligation to then report via the balance sheet, the trading and the profit and loss account, the, the final accounts of the business, are able to report what the profitability is and pay the requisite amount of tax. So in this session we've talked about management accounting and the importance of management accounting and we've talked about some of the activities that the management accountant um, gets involved in and the importance of management accountant uh, as a facilitator of good decision making. It's important that you perhaps go back over the video and make some notes on the different points and have a clear understanding of what is required to be a good management accountant. But that's all we're going to deal with here, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.